the grace of God about the language of prosperity. I want to establish today that there is a way of speaking that pleases God, a way that brings healing, prosperity, and success into your life. It is called the language of faith. We are told that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so faith has a language. The Bible says that the Lord hath given to me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh mine ear to hear as the learned, to hear as one who is learned. The sword of God is in the mouth of the believer. Therefore, what we say is of great importance. The writer declares here today that it is God who had given to me a learned tongue, a trained tongue, a disciplined tongue, so that I might know how to speak a word. We tend to follow the lingo, the, the cultural vernacular of the people amongst whom we were raised. We all do. Even after becoming saved, uh, too often we keep the customs and we speak as we used to before we were enlightened, before we were saved. This is almost a common problem, but I want to show you today that it is God's intention that we overcome such a problem because your success is dependent upon what comes out of your mouth. In the scripture, we notice that even servants of God had the same problem. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 6 and verse 5, Isaiah begins to speak after that he had an encounter with God. And he said, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. I am undone. I am not where God wants me to be. I am as a cake half baked. I am undone. I am not living at the realm that God created me to live at. I want you to watch the significance of this. He says, because, why is this so? He says, because I am a man of unclean lips. He was connecting the present state of his life, the things that was happening in his home and his family to what was coming out of his mouth. He said, because I'm a man of unclean lips. And then he says, and I have dwell, and I dwell amongst uh, a people of unclean lips. I live in the midst of people who, whose tongues are not trained, who don't know how to speak. And he says, I have come to realize this because mine eyes have seen the king. It is my hope today that you will see God in a dimension you've never seen him before. So that this revelation will become your reality. The revelation of the power that God had given to you, the power of speech, to chart your course in life. Culturally, we pick up habits. And sometimes these habits become difficult to break. But I'm not just talking about your accent or your language as in whether it be English or French. But I'm talking about cultural habits that have been groomed in us. We've inculcated these habits since we were children because we have been raised in an environment where certain things were the norm. In, in Titus 1 and 12, 
the apostle writing concerning them, saying that one of their own prophets had said that Christians are always liars. But he had generally cast, as it were, a pronouncement on the people as a body, as a whole. He said they're always liars. They're evil beasts and they're slow belly. To this witness, the apostle said, he found to be true. Now that was the lingo, that was the narrative that was shared amongst them. That was the custom, the culture that existed among them. And so those who were raised in that culture would have had to fight against these utterances and against this way of doing things because their faith, you know, we talked about faith being required to please God. Their faith would have been seen in their ability to resist these words and to stand upon God's word saying what God says that we should say. And so there's a language, beloved. When you and I would have been saved, there's a new language in which we must speak. It is called the language of faith. And speech is important. Speech is very important. Colossians 4 and 6, it says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. I see a connection between what the writer is saying in Colossians and what the writer said in Isaiah 15, 4. In Isaiah 50, he declared, uh, the Lord had given to me a trained or a disciplined tongue. And today, I want to ask all of us to let us bring our tongues on the altar. Let us bring our tongues before the Lord so that he might train us how to speak our way into success. There's a way you can speak your way into blessings. You can speak your way into prosperity. God calls it faith, without which it is impossible to please him. And so in Colossians, the writer says, let your speech be always, not some of the times. Because the problem that we often have as believers is that there is inconsistency in our speech. There is one time that we speak in faith and another time we say things that are doubtful, things that are of unbelief. And so there is a contradiction. And so while you may have faith for something and you may pray, it may still not happen because of the level of unbelief that is in you. You can be believing that God will do something. But if you still stagger with unbelief, you may not obtain that promise. The Bible says in James <laughs> that if you are double-minded, do not even think that you will receive anything from God. And so there are times that we stand in faith and we pray and we may have faith when you are in a certain gathering or group. But when you would have left that group or maybe you go to your homes, the enemy begins to attack you in your mind with thoughts of unbelief. And without realizing, sometimes you begin to process these thoughts, not realizing you're meditating on unbelief. And thereby, the thing you had believed for initially, the thing you had prayed for, keeps eluding you, keeps escaping your grasp because of your unbelief.